Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Vincent, I'm co-founder of Dissimo. Uh, we are a Dutch startup and it's great to be here. We have been to a lot of Mobile Money events, so now it's amazing to be here ourselves. Uh, like Mark introduced, uh, we run a startup that is in apps or analytics. And if the sheets are... Sheets are coming, sheets are coming. So we're talking today about mobile distribution. A mobile distribution in our view today is talking about mobile app stores. Thank you very much. It's talking about mobile app stores. Um, because this is the situation today. Two years after Apple started with this Apple App Store, we now have over 40 different app stores in the market. And an app store, in our view, is a one central place where a lot of consumers can, on their mobile phone can discover, download, and pay mobile content, and where developers that make that content can uh, get easy access to that consumer reach. Uh, so Apple is, is the big name here. Everybody knows uh, the Apple App Store, the iPhone Store, of course. Uh, but 40 in the market right now. Uh, last year, we have seen a lot of uh, device manufacturers, the Nokia, the Samsung, the Apple, of course, launching app stores. Uh, we have seen Android, Windows, so the OS developers going that direction themselves. The carriers, Vodafone with an app store. And uh, the speaker after me, Bill Scott, the independent stores like Getcha, who actually have been doing this game uh, a few years before Apple started it. So 40 in the market. Um, what we do with these 40 app stores, because any consumer right now can choose any of these 40 stores to get mobile content, but any developer can do the same. You have 40 channels to reach any consumer in the world if you want. And what we do on a daily basis is we connect to all these different app stores and we gather data on any application in any country. Uh, we analyze this data on a daily matter, and we do this because we want to have a good feeling of what is happening in the mobile app store market, and that we want to know what, what is really going on in mobile distribution and in mobile content. Um, the reason I'm here today, we, we, we closely monitor these stores, and today I would like to share some of our views on the seven uh, most in interesting stores right now that are distributing mobile content and we have been monitoring for the last year. So to start off, it's all about, all about content, of course, about apps. So what's actually in these stores? Uh, if you look at simply the store sizes, you have the Apple App Store. Anyone with an iPhone right now in the audience can start up the Apple App Store, and you have over 200,000 different content items available. You can have it on your phone in a minute, 200,000 different items. Uh, the iPad Store, two months old, 8,000 different content items to choose from on a daily basis worldwide. Uh, so Apple is clearly king. It's a move, moving ahead in, the, in this field in the, in the purely number of apps terms. Uh, but actually, Android market is also catching up. It's now closing in on 50,000 applications. Uh, behind there is Getjar, and then we have the other guys, Nokia, Palm, and BlackBerry, and Windows uh, itself. So Apple biggest uh, no, of uh, Android in seconds. But if you look at, OK, the, these stores are evolving constantly. If you look at growth, uh, how these stores are adding new content. The Apple App Store is now, right now, the last couple of months, has been adding uh, 7 to 8 to 9 percent new content on a monthly basis. So that's a relative growth. Uh, but if you look at Android, actually, it's growing faster. We have seen over the last three to four months, we have seen that the Android market has been adding close to 20 percent new content every single month. So if you're a consumer with an Android phone, 20 percent new content to choose from on a monthly basis. So following that are OV and Windows. Um, so if a consumer opens one of these app stores, well, what can he get? Does he have to pay or can he download free apps? Uh, most of these stores, it's 75% paid, 25% free. So as a consumer, for most content, you have to pay. For the other one, the 25% that's free, most of these apps have models where they, for example, insert advertising or work with different models with in-app purchasing. So 75, 25, the, the one that's really different is Android. It's less than half paid content, but the main reason is that Google is gradually rolling out support for these paid apps in different countries. Uh, but the number of countries where they support this is not as large as Apple. So this is changing also a bit towards 75, 25. Uh, so if people then buy, buy content, what, what do they buy? Uh, the, the most uh, popular things are games and entertainment. So people buy content on their phone for their, for their amusement. Uh, but you see quite some differences between countries. Uh, in the Netherlands, we see that people tend to buy more utilities, useful apps to find their way or to find the cheapest things in the supermarket. Uh, in other countries in the United States, you see that people really stick to games. Um, and what, one thing that strikes us from this is that you have BlackBerry App World, the, the store for the business phone, as it was known. But actually, the, this business phone, most people download and buy games on this phone, games and teams. Not utilities, not business app, not tools, games and teams. So that, that was quite a surprise for ourselves. Um, yeah, what it's all about for the developers, monetization. Is anybody actually making money out of these app stores? So these are a few snippets from the recent press. 
If you take them out, the short version of the answer is yes. A few examples. Uh, Game Loft made 25 million for the App Store last year, in 2009. That's even before the really bigger growth of the App Store started. Uh, eBody, here from Amsterdam, uh, turned into a profitable company because of their mobile strategy, because of these App Stores and the way they are monetizing their content. Uh, Tapulus is an example of somebody that's really uh, trying out new business models and mobile content and being actually quite successful in that. So yes, there's revenue being made. So developers are making revenue, consumers are buying content, but what does a consumer pay? If you look at all these applications in these stores, and you take a look at the, diff the different averages prices in these different storefronts, you see that for the Apple App Store, the, different, uh, the average app will cost you between three and four dollars. It's more four dollars than three right now. And that's a bit of the same range as several of the other stores. So it's around three to four dollars with two big exceptions. Uh, you have the BlackBerry App World, who's uh, seven and a half dollars right now for the average application. Uh, Windows Marketplace is around six dollars. So you have a whole range of stores that, that are between three, four dollars. You have two guys on top of that that are way more expensive for the consumer. Uh, the reason why it is like that is actually the developer themselves. Uh, it's, it's their pricing strategy if they go for different stores. This is an example of Tetris, the game from EA. Uh, you want to buy Tetris on uh, the Apple App Store, you pay two ninety nine today. So you pay close to three dollars. Uh, you have you maybe you want the same game, but you have a Windows phone. You open your Windows Marketplace, and you pay for the same game, same developer, you pay $7. So that's, that, that's the pricing difference they, they cope with in these stores. A different example, uh, Iron Plus. If you buy it on Apple, $9.99 today. If you buy the same game, and, and again, the same developer, close to $40 in the BlackBerry App World. So the, obviously, these are causing differences in the, in the pricing we see in these trends. Um, so yeah, if, if you look at the, these are a bit of trends we've seen right now, well, what do we expect that's next in the, the mobile app store market and the world of uh, what we see is the new mobile content distribution? Uh, first of all, there will be a lot of cross-store developers, and we define a cross-store developer as a developer that doesn't go for iPhone or Android, but goes for different platforms and goes for different stores. If, if I have a really cool game and I want to reach all of you today, I probably have to be in five, six, maybe seven different stores to get my content on your phone, your iPad, or whatsoever. Uh, so right now we see that there are over 2,600 different developers in the world who do this, who go for more stores, more channels. Uh, and we've seen this growing really rapidly over the last month. Uh, and we also expect that with the new stores, we have a lot of carriers coming with the mobile app stores, that developers will more and more uh, tend to go for a, a strategy where they publish the content in various storefronts. So that's one. Uh, the second thing is, uh, consumers are pr pretty smart, and definitely if you give them access to this, this sort of data on what's available. App stores are, are making it easier for a consumer to discover content, but also to compare what, what's out there, and to have a good feeling of what is available and what the price of some things are. So we believe, if you look at this pricing level you have right now, we believe that consumers won't cope with this for a long time. If you, ha you buy a game on an iPhone, and there's a guy sitting next to you who has a BlackBerry who pays twice as much for the same game from the same developer, uh, we don't think consumers will take that for very long. Uh, because if you look at these prices, we think within one and a half, two years max, it will be more like this. More the same level, more around a dollar or four. And we choose that price range because we have been monitoring, for example, uh, the Apple App Store for the last two years. This price actually has, has been fairly stable all the time in the two, two years. So that price point has been handled by Apple constantly around $4. So we think that all the stores will somewhere end up around that average pricing. Uh, new ways to monetize. So right now, most developers go for either you pay one fee to try on an app and you, you like it or not, or you get a free app with advertising. Uh, we think there's, there's a lot of different models right now that are available to the developers. An example is Top Up Revenge. It's a free game in the Apple App Store. Uh, but they have inner purchases. So you give something away to the consumer for free, and say, okay, if you, if you like it, if you like our content, you can buy additional gaming levels, additional uh, features in your application, and you pay for that. Uh, these guys said, okay, I give away something for free, and if you want to have more, it starts at $1, low price point. Uh, and we compared that with FIFA, who has a different strategy, who says, okay, I have a really cool football game, and if you want to buy it, you pay uh, $6.99 in the Apple App Store. If you look at these two guys on a monthly basis, actually Tap Tap Revenge generated more revenue out of the App Store than FIFA, with a price point that's more than seven times as high. Thus, we expect more of developers going for sort of flexible business models where they can have different ways to uh, monetize their content. Uh, last thing, we see that um, 
stores compete for consumers. Store, every store wants to have the, the largest reach of consumers in the market, but they also compete for the developers. If you are the store with the best content that's the most popular among consumers, the consumer is going to find you. So it's a lot of uh, push and pull for the best developers with the best content. And uh, last year we sat down with a group of developers and we asked them, if you choose a store, what is important for you? Uh, and this, this is what came out of that, that, that session, uh, volume. I want to have a large reach of consumers. I want to be able to build in a proper way. Uh, I want to have uh, the ability to have a good track of what consumers think of my application, so the review process. And if it all works out, I want to be able to drive traffic to these app stores. So any app store that scores well in these fields will try to draw as many developers as you can. Um, and to close off, actually, we think 2010 is going to be about growth. Uh, up until now, we have never had so many channels to get mobile content, so many developers that are going for all these different stores that we have. And we have never had more consumer reach in the market that actually can get access to this content. So it's all about growth. Um, if you're interested in more, there are a lot of reports and stuff like this on our website. So that was it. Thank you. <laughs> Done. Maybe there are some uh, questions from the audience. Uh, first of all, let, let me ask you one question. Do you have a number of the total amount of downloads a month that you monitor? So over all the apps, over all the platforms, how many downloads do you see actually on the mobile platforms? Um, yeah, that's a tough question. The, the, the downloads that we monitor, yeah. so we also monitor downloads for the developers themselves, but that information is only available to the specific developers. Okay. So what, what we share today is a pure analysis of public available data. So we track data every day on the stores, uh, the same data you and I can get from the app store right now. And all these findings are from analyzing that public available stuff. And the, the, analysis, uh, the data that we have on really downloads and revenue go to the developers themselves. But, but do you have just the overall picture how big the mobile industry is based on the downloads that no, you see? Actually, we, we are, that's something we're doing very actively right now, looking at the app store, but it's a bit too early for us to tell uh, okay. that in detail. Maybe a question from the audience? Vincent. Um, at what you, you saw that uh, you said that the iPhone store is the biggest, Android's coming up. Uh, at what point will they, um, will they be the same high, same? Yeah, and stuff is, if you look at the current growth, especially with, with the new iPad and stuff like, uh, stuff like that, if Android doesn't speed up even more, they, they will not uh, catch up, we think. We think there will be more accelerated growth also for the iPhone. So we expect the iPhone to be the, the king, as we call it, for quite some time. And Android will definitely be, in terms of sheer numbers, will be number two, and it will be a close battle in the coming years. But we don't expect for the next few years that, uh, that they will overtake Apple yet. So. There's a question. Jonathan. If you're trying to keep your development costs low, mm -hmm. would you recommend simply going for the Android and iTunes and saying to hell with the rest? Yeah, the, the, the interesting thing is, uh, on the one hand, you have to go for all these stores if you want to reach everybody, but reaching everybody is very expensive and very tough for developers, you understand that? So, uh, the smart thing might, uh, today might be to go even for the stores, not even Android. Android is really picking up, but go for other stores that offer uh, other reach. Maybe, uh, for example, a Getcha is an interesting one who has a lot of different platforms. Uh, the Nokia Overstore and BlackBerry App World, who are still fairly small in numbers, uh, it's easier for you to get audience over there if you have a cool app. So it might be a strategy not to go for the big guys that everybody's going for, but to go for the smaller stores that still have a really big uh, consumer audience, but not the growth yet in available applications. So I would say then OV and uh, BlackBerry. Okay. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Right. Oh, uh, here we are. Hold on.